Well, everybody, welcome to the Back to Basics Online Church. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is August 9, 2020. Summertime is getting away from us. Praise God. And it is hot down in here in Atlanta. Hot Atlanta, as they call it. And hope things are well wherever you are. Praise God. We're going to move right into our 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 worship service praise god and uh we're gonna ask we're gonna ask uh ryan trogler ryan marysville pennsylvania to lead us in prayer please ryan uh, good morning again pastor good morning church good morning. heavenly father heavenly father we want to thank you for making another day and letting us rejoice in it Lord, we just ask you to, to bless this online ministry, and we ask you to give the give strength and encouragement and the wisdom to Pastor Carter to give us your beautiful word again today. Lord, we ask you to, to bless and protect this great nation and its leadership all around the world. Lord, we ask you to you know, uh, provide and protect the people with this virus and going around and you know, heal them of their, whatever their, their needs are and, and provide for them. Lord, we just ask you to just touch our hearts and let us come to you, Lord, and guide us and lead us to where you need us to be. Lord, we just want to say we thank you, we praise you, worship you, glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate you. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for you and for how God is using you. And praise God that God bless Ryan to be ordained three weeks ago. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's got work for you, so you be alert. God will show you what he wants you to do. In the meantime, continue to be a blessing to this ministry. And you're, you're a blessing to not only this nation, but the whole world. Praise God. We welcome everybody. Praise God. And um, want to know, does anybody have a testimony? Anything you want to share with us, what God is doing in your life? what God has done. Come on, somebody. Let's hear a testimony. Somebody give God some praise for what God has Florence done. Florence Gaffney. Welcome, Florence Gaffney. Praise God. Welcome, Hey Wes and Marisol. Praise, praise God. Florence, you got a testimony from up there in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, what God is doing? Oh, well, we're still doing our online church and... Uh, Weather was good. We didn't get a bad, not in this Coatesville area, with the storms, and we all come at pretty well, a little light out, but we're still standing and trusted in our Lord. Thank praise you. God, How praise about? God. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. hurricane passed you by. The hurricane didn't do too much damage. Now, not around here in Coatesville, but outer areas that trees down, people flooded, floods being rescued, and Downingtown was pretty well underwater, different areas, but uh, I guess day by day, electricity still out in some areas, and uh, my cousin David down in uh, Berwyn said they had lost power since Tuesday night, and they wasn't expecting it to be back on until maybe Saturday, but I had talked to him, and it was on me by Thursday anyway. Friday. Okay, but, okay. But they weathered the storm. Otherwise, everybody's still standing and good. Praise mm-hmm. God. Praise, Praise God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sister Florence. Thank you, Sister Florence. Give my love to everybody up there in sure the will. Coatesville mm-hmm. area. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else mm-hmm. want to share uh, what God is doing, what God has done? we got time for one more person. Uh, I want to share how God is answering prayers, not necessarily for myself, but for other people um, in our brick-and-mortar church. Um, We have one uh, sister who's in the hospital, and uh, she went through her procedure. She came through successfully, found out she, they did diagnose her. However, uh, her diagnosis was not a result of cancer. So that was a blessing. We had another member who was to go in to have surgery on both of her eyes because of bleeding in her eyes. And as the doctor mm-hmm. prepared to do the in-office surgery, he found out there was no bleeding in one eye. 
and there is slight bleeding in the other eye, so all she needed was a shot. And then another member who went in for eye surgery, and as he was preparing for surgery, they also discovered that his eyes were not <clears throat> as bad as they thought they were, so he, um, his surgery was not as expensive as they thought it would be. Um, and those are just three examples of just this week how God is answering the prayers of those who are fervent in their prayers, not necessarily for self, but for others. Praise God, Sister Jackie. Praise God. Thank you for those testimonies of what God is doing. Um, she's referencing to, referencing to the Shy Temple CME Church, our home church, our brick and mortar church. And God is moving mightily there, blessing people there. And he's moving all over the land, uh, in your household, my household, and all over the nation, and all over the world. Praise God. I received a call from uh, Elijah in Kenya a few days ago he said he was aching and had the chills and fever and aching all over he, he was soliciting prayer and so um, we sent him uh, some money and go to the doctor he went to the hospital and they said he had malaria and they said mm. he gets about with malaria every year but we, he's doing mm. much better now but praise God that, that, that God is the healer and he can use us to help bring healing to people all over the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you do here at Back to Basics Ministries, you are touching people all over the world. And the scripture says we comfort one another with the comfort with which he gives us. So we help comfort Elijah all the way in Kenya so that Elijah can get healthy and strong and continue the great work in Kenya. Praise God. I thank God. We helped him to build, a, get the land three years ago and uh, start the church construction two years ago. And last year we raised money to plaster the church. So the new church is doing well, and we just bless God. And, and, and you are a, a very important part of that, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. We give God all the glory. So we thank God for your testimonies, and we thank God uh, for Ryan's prayer, for Jackie's testimony, Florence Gaffney's testimony, and uh, thank God for what he's doing. So, like I said, we're going to start, um, try our best each week to make sure our service is that we end at 12. At 12, around 12, we don't want to prolong you. So, uh, some of you have other service you, services you attend. And so um, we um, start at quarter of 11 on Sundays, we play our music at 12, then at 12 we'll come on and, and, and praise and worship testimonies, prayer, and the scripture, and then have a word, and close up by 12 o'clock. We can do this. We can do this. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Open your Bibles, will you please? Open your Bibles. We're going to look at two passages of scripture. One is Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now Second Thessalonians, uh, um, I don't want to. If I could, if I, if I could look at you, I'll turn in your Bible. I don't want to see any dust coming out of your off the pages of your Bible as you try to find Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians is back there. It's right behind First Thessalonians, <laughs> just before First Timothy, just before mm -hmm. First Timothy in the New Testament. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Um, find that and then put your finger in it, and then back up a couple books to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and Romans chapter 1 and our subject today is going to be entitled what is truth part 2 what is truth part 2 and uh, we want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Christina McDaniel way over there in in Oklahoma and Christina put a post, a post on Facebook this morning about the truth and how people are persecuted for preaching the truth. So we're on the same page, Tina. 
praise God. And as you listen to this recording, uh, we give a shout out to you and Tommy and Paige and all of your family. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, ladies and gentlemen, and we want to look at verses 10 through 13. I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians, then we're going to flip back and read Romans chapter 1, a few verses. In 2 Thessalonians, Paul's second letter to the church at Thessalonica, Thessalonica was a very important uh, place uh, in, in the kingdom of God, and it was there that Paul answered in that first book, the first letter he wrote to them, he answered that question about what's going to happen to the dead who died in Christ? Did they die in vain? Because as the people were recognizing that the rapture was uh, being prolonged, that it wasn't coming as quickly as they thought it was coming, they wondered, well, what about our dead relatives, dead loved ones, ones, ones who died in vain? What will happen when the rapture comes? And in First Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, Paul told them, oh, don't worry about it. They will rise. He said, when, when, the, when the trumpet sounds and the Lord stands in the clouds and with a shout, then the dead in Christ will rise first, and those of us who are alive will be caught up in the air with them. So there is going to be a rapture, ladies and gentlemen. There is going to be a rapture. You can count on that because the Bible says so. And so in Second Thessalonians, Paul writes another letter to the churches Thessal Thessalonica. They've got a problem there, an issue there, and the same issue we have here in the United States and in many nations, the issue with false teachers and people teaching what is not the truth. There is a struggle, ladies and gentlemen. There is a tension in this nation. There is a tension, a struggle, even in the body of Christ, about what is the truth. And so there's a major war going on. There's a, 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 a real war going on about what is the truth. And a lot of people are, are being deceived and caught up with this fake news, uh, uh, much of it coming out of the White House, much of it coming out of Congress, and 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 you don't know what uh, news uh, service to 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 uh, to uh, believe. Some states have cut off CNN. You can't get news from CNN from some states, and so and so when you don't in those states, they have no clue as to what is going on about that coronavirus and, and the real truth of the matter. And in those states, I mean, I mean, hey, hey, the president has so manipulated the news that he's even persuaded some news, some states to shut down certain newscasters so that certain news does not reach the people. We've got it. We've got a guy in that office. He is a, a real thorough manipulator of the truth. And praise God. And, and the church, ladies and gentlemen, the church has been deceived. So it's time for a wake-up call for the church. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. I hate politics. Politics stinks. But politics has gotten all in the church. And, and it, it's a shame. It's a shame to see so many believers who get on Facebook and the social media and, and are denouncing people as Democrats and Republicans. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever happened to people? People are entitled to think whatever way they think, but don't denounce people. And don't put label them and put them into a, 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 a package, you know, the evangelicals here and the uh, conservatives there and the liberals there and the Democrats and the Republicans, because when you denounce a whole group, you're throwing a whole lot of babies out with the bathwater. So let's look at Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Chapter two. Verses 10 and 11, and with all deceivableness of right, unrighteousness, big words, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the truth, the love of the truth, that they might be saved. <clears throat> Let me read that again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing this in America today and in the nations. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing this in the church, what the word prophesied in 2 Thessalonians when Paul wrote to the Thessalonians almost 2,000 years ago. He said, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, there will be great deceivableness. People will be deceivable. There will be a lot of deceit, a lot, a lot of unrighteousness in the people that perish. And why? And he says in that 10th verse, and they perish because they receive not the love of the truth. They receive not the love of the truth. Let me turn this phone down. They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to church 18 times a day, 36 times on a Sunday. But if you don't have the love for the truth, then you're open for anything that's coming out of somebody's mouth. And the problem, Paul says, in this uh, Second Thessalonians verse 10 People do not have a love for the truth. And if you don't have a love for the truth, then you have a love for the lie, and you are susceptible, you're vulnerable to any lie coming out of anybody's mouth. We are witnessing this in America today. We are witnessing today. American, America's elected a liar, and they knew he was a liar before they elected him and put him in office, and now America is reaping what America sowed. The Bible says you shall reap what you sow. And it's going to get even worse as we come to this election. Now we're getting near an election, and they're trying to shut down the postal system. They're trying to slow down the mail. Now people are distributing uh, mail hand-to-hand -hand in the postal offices instead of machines and computers doing this as was done before. And they're doing everything that this president says do to slow down the procedure, slow it down to the place where the mail system will shut down before the election and there will be no real true vote count. And then we look, when you look on the international scene, Russia is pumping up their game. They're upping their game to disrupt the American election. And they did the same thing back in 2016, but the government refused to acknowledge it. Now chickens are coming home to roost. And even the Chinese are getting involved in trying to uh, corrupt this uh, election. Already you have corruption seeds being sown by the president into certain areas, telling the postmaster general and the postal system, shut it down and 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 Already they're sowing seeds to, to corrupt the mail-in votes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you and I as Christians, we've got to be alert. And, 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 and Lord, have mercy on the people in those, nation, in those states in America where they're not allowed to hear CNN news or, or real news, and they're getting the same uh, garbage that's coming out of the White House and the White House-backed news agencies. And so you've got uh, half of the church in America being blindsided by the truth, and then the other half, you've got a lot of them who don't even want to know the truth. So we're in bad shape, ladies and gentlemen, but you and I, we must stand for the truth. You and I must stand for the truth. We must stay alert. We must stay awake. And so we're... In part two of our two-part series, What is Truth? Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Isaiah asked, who shall believe our report? Here's this prophet, this great prophet in the 8th century preaching the word, and he asked God, who shall believe our report? Elijah says, I'm preaching, I'm doing this, and, and, and I'm doing that. And God, you even have me preach, walk the streets naked one time and preach. One time you have me lay on my side uh, for, for, for a year, and then you told me to turn over on the other side for the year in the town. I had to go up every day and lay on my side, my left side, at the city gate for a year. And every day uh, after it, I, for, for another three months, I had to go and lay on my right side and preach the gospel. And, 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 and so, but people still will not re receive our report. 
And so this question, what is truth? And, and why can't people believe the truth? Well, Paul nails it in this 10th verse. He says, because they re receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. People don't want the love of the truth, and consequently, they don't want to be saved. But we've got to preach the word, Jackie. We've got to preach the word, Ryan. We've got to preach the word, Florence. We've got to preach the word, Wes. We've got to right. preach the word, Tina. We've got to preach the word, Elijah, so that people can know the truth, and the truth shall make them free. And then, ladies and gentlemen, there are some areas where uh, preaching like this, they, they won't air this on in, in certain areas. Facebook won't even allow it, and, 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 and the social media will shut it down because it runs counter to what this president has, has instructed some of the social media folks to accept. There's a conspiracy going on, ladies and gentlemen, and people are gagging, and, and, and oh, they're flourishing in those churches where you got those punks in the pulpit. I call them punks in the pulpit, Ryan. That means they're afraid to speak up against the atrocities, against the lies, against racism, against a sin. They're afraid. They're afraid to speak up against anything that's anti-Republican Party. They're afraid to speak up uh, against anything that's anti the president because they're afraid they don't want to lose <coughs> that that uh, federal money they're getting they don't want to lose favor they don't want to lose their following they don't want to lose their crowd ryan is god gets you ready for ministry be true to god be faithful to god don't compromise don't don't let anybody own you don't let it let anybody, uh, uh, don't get in anybody's pocket. Don't let anybody manipulate you. God called you. Be faithful to God. You see, I'm, I'm a preacher, Ryan, and I preach the gospel. I preach what thus saith the Lord in this word. And if it's not in the Bible, I ain't going to preach it. And, and if I do preach it, I'm going to back it up with the scripture. And I'm not afraid to preach with it well they might hurt you well they might hurt me yes they hurt isaiah they hurt jeremiah they hurt hosea they hurt habakkuk they hurt everybody else and jesus said if anyone will come after me they must uh, suffer persecution nobody wants to invite persecution but it's going to come people are going to hate on you and so i'm not going to be one of those who will stand before god and 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 God's going to ask me, well, why didn't you preach this? Why didn't you preach against racism? Why didn't you preach against uh, 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 the violence of Black Lives Matter? Why didn't you preach against this part and this and that? And I'm going to, I'm not going to be one who'll say, well, God, I was afraid of the people, because God told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the people; they're going to hate you. Harden your head, your forehead, like a flint. And get out there and say what well, thus saith the Lord, whether they like you or not. And that's the way we roll here at Back to Basics Ministries. That's the way we roll. Paul said in that 11th verse of Second Thessalonians chapter 10, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, you wonder why there is so much Wrestling with the truth in America today and in the world, Paul nails it in Second Thessalonians. Read the whole book when you get a chance. He nails it in this 10th and 11th verse because they lacked love of the truth. They had no sincere desire for the love of the truth in their hearts. In other words, they were open to the lies. It's like the politicians in America today, they have lined up, and, and, and we've got so many punks in Congress and in the Senate, uh, and they and they know in their heart of hearts they are wrong in the way they vote, but they vote the way they are instructed from above, and I'm not talking about from above, from heaven. I mean from above, from uh, uh, their 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 standard bearer, and and so there must be a love for the truth. How can you how can you say you represent people? and you don't have a love for the truth. How can you say you represent the state of New Mexico or Arizona or Texas or Pennsylvania or Florida or Georgia, and you, you hate a portion of that state that you represent because they're black 
or because they're Hispanic, uh, and, and you only want to promote white interests. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a great shaking in this nation, and that shaking is soon. And the sad thing is, Ryan, this coronavirus doesn't seem to be enough to shake America. It doesn't seem to be enough to shake America. I'm looking at South Dakota today. For the next 10 days, over 250,000 bikers are assembling in a portion of South Dakota for their 10-day run. And, and, and they're not wearing masks. They're defying all, all the doctors and defying what the doctors and the scientists say. And then we're going to have, we're going to have our run. We're Americans, and, 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 and we're, we, we have our liberties and our First uh, Amendment rights and, and Second Amendment rights. There's some of them packing guns, too. And we're Americans. We don't need masks. We don't, we don't want you lying to us about masks. And so 250,000 of them are assembling. They're going to be breathing on one another, drinking beer, coughing on one another, sneezing on one another. And then the sad thing is they're going to go back to their various states even as far southeast as Florida and as far north as Maine, they're going to go back to their states and infect thousands, tens of thousands of people. Why? Because we have our rights. <clears throat> we have freedom of choice. And ladies and gentlemen, it's because people do not want to know the truth. And, you're going to, and there are a lot of folks in that number. They are Christians, Christian bikers. They are Christians. No mass. No mass. They're not going to protect themselves, and they're not going to protect you. Oh, Jesus got me. The man upstairs got me. He's got me covered. Look, God did not call you to be stupid. God did not call you to be a, a puppet. God did not call you to be a marionette. He didn't call you to have somebody put his hand in you and work your mouth and to say whatever they give you to say. God said, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm preaching today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm preaching to somebody. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Don't be a slave of these politicians. Don't be a slave of this government. Don't be a slave of your church. If your church is not preaching holiness and righteousness and the true gospel, then you need to get up out of there, shake the dust out of your feet, and seek the Lord with all your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth. Now flip, will you please, to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Let's take another look at Paul's contemporaries in Rome. We saw what was happening in Thessalonica. Now let's look what Paul wrote to Rome and look at the situation in Rome. And this was 2,000 years ago, the first century, ladies and gentlemen, first century A.D. This message is 2,000 years old. Look at how the people were living. First, Romans chapter 1, starting with 24, and I'm going to read eight verses. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up to their own lust. Put a million tattoos on your body. Cut your body. Present your body. Expose your body. Dishonor your bodies. Do whatever you do in public or in secret. Defy uh, my principles, God says. I give you up to do that. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, these verses I'm reading, 24 through 32 in Romans chapter 1, is because people decided to kick God out of their lives. And we're doing the same thing 2,000 years later. We've kicked Jesus mm -hmm. out of our house, out of marriage, mm -hmm. out of the church, out of the school, out of the government. We've kicked him out, and we're in the mess we're in. And evidently, evidently, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, coronavirus is not impactful enough 
to wake us up to our senses. This is a plague, ladies and gentlemen. When you look at the history of plagues in the Bible, plagues came because the people denied God and refused to listen to him. We're in a plague, ladies and gentlemen. This is not some sickness. It's not a disease. It's a plague. And the only cure for a plague is repentance. The only cure. When are the politicians going to wake up? When are the government officials going to wake up? When is the president going to wake up? When are the pastors going to wake up? When are you going to wake up? The only cure for a plague is repentance. So let's look at 24 through 32. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, listen to this, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Underline those words, a reprobate mind. And even... <laughs> As they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, listen to this, who knowing the judgment of God, that, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get a chance, read Romans chapter 1 and read Second Thessalonians and, and get the fullness of, 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 of this gospel. Uh, from from uh, Second Thessalonians, we see that when people do not want to know the truth and they push God out, and, 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 and they will listen to lying leaders and choose to follow liars rather than uh, teachers of the truth, God will send strong delusion. Ladies and gentlemen, strong delusion is much more dangerous than deception. Many people have been deceived in this nation, and especially through this president and his lying tweets. Many people have been deceived through uh, his spokespersons mm -hmm. and, and, and those who represent him. That's deception. But, ladies and gentlemen, God will send strong delusion if we choose to continue to follow deception and continue to eat up the fake news and to believe the fake news and not seek the truth. And if the church, ladies and gentlemen, the church, the blood washed, continue to seek the, the philosophy of man and what man's thoughts are, or what Bishop so-and-so's take is on this, or what uh, uh, Pastor so-and-so thinks about this, if we continue to seek the, the, the knowledge of man and, 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 and not seek the wisdom of God, God says in... Uh, 
Second Thessalonians, he will send us strong delusion. And strong delusion means that we will incorporate the lies. We will receive the lies and we will reject the truth. And there is no hope. You can be washed in the blood of Jesus. But if you choose strong delusion, mm-hmm. if you choose to yeah. turn from God, <clears throat> you're not going to get saved. Well, Pastor Carter, I, dis- I disagree with you. Well, you disagree all you want. I don't care. You can disagree all you want till, the, till hell freezes over, till the sky turns green. But I'm preaching the truth. It's the truth anyhow. Once saved is not always saved. Once uh-huh. saved is not always saved. You can get saved, but if you choose to turn against God, if you choose to not hear the word of God, if you choose to believe a lying president, if you choose to put people down because of the color of their skin or, or uh, what side of the tracks they live on, if you choose to hate rather than love, don't expect salvation. Please, please do not delude yourself. God says he will send you strong delusion if you choose to receive the untruth. And then in Romans chapter 1, the Bible says if we continue to, to, to wrestle against God and deny God and deny his truth and, and deny the word coming from his prophets and deny this word, Romans one twenty eight says God will turn us over to a reprobate mind. What is a reprobate mind? Well, I, I, I can show you one. Take a, 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 a trip uh, tomorrow uh, to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., and I'll show you what a reprobate mind looks like. Uh, a reprobate mind. Uh, a man who doesn't even understand what's coming out of his own mouth. He'll say one mm. thing to one group and something to another, and it's contradictory, and, and it's confusing, and it's just plain downright. It's pathetic. It's pitiful. Oh, and even that. many people in Europe and other nations are laughing at the idiocy of this president. And not only are they laughing at the idiocy of this president, but they're laughing at the idiocy of the American people who support him because there are folks today, if there were election tomorrow, an election tomorrow, they would, uh, they would e- elect that, re-elect that doofus and put him back in the White House tomorrow if they had a chance because they would rather, they would rather enjoy the pleasures of a moment than to, 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 to walk in the light and the truth of God's word. How can you support a racist, a whoremonger, a manipulator, a liar, a deceiver, a robber, a bigot? How can you call yourself a Christian? Yeah. And and, right. and 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 follow someone like this. And you know, mm-hmm. most Christians in America say well, Pastor Carter, you're in error because the Bible says, <clears throat> obey those who have the rule over you. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Please, Mr. Super Christian, you read the whole scripture. That Bible says, obey those who have the rule over you, for they watch over your souls. Mm. And that man in the White House is not watching over my soul. No. He's not watching over your soul. So if you're going to throw some scripture at me, you throw the whole gospel at me. The whole, not, not, don't pick, don't cherry pick, don't cherry pick and try to beat me up with that. You beat me up with the whole scripture. Mm. Obey yeah. those who have the rule over you. That means obey your pastor. If your pastor is right with God, your pastor preaches the gospel, the gospel obey yeah. their gospel. But you don't have to obey a pastor who ain't right. If, if your pastor's an adulterer and scared to preach on ad- adultery, how can you obey him? And as I asked a great famous pastor last year, why don't you uh, uh, white preachers preach against racism? He said, we ain't. That was his mm-hmm. answer. We ain't. We ain't going to do it. Mm-hmm. And that was it between him and me. 
He fired uh, me from my job. He had hired me to do it. He fired me. Mm. Well, we ain't. We ain't, he said. Well, how <laughs> can you call yourself a man of God, a woman of God, and you ain't going to preach against racism? Mm -hmm. That yeah, means yeah. to me that you you think you're better than I. Mm. You, you think you're much uh, 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 better than I. You're, you're better than me. I'm, I'm black. You're white. You think you're much better than I. And conversely. If, if uh, uh, like, okay, this is Elijah Muhammad thing, uh, calling uh, white folks the devil. All white folks are not the devil. A lot of black mm -hmm. folks are the devil. Racism, mm -hmm. if, we, if we preach that white folks are the devil, we're wrong. God made all of us in his image. He breathed the breath of life into Adam, and Adam became a living being. He said, go, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the whole earth. And Jesus said that you love one another as I have loved you. Ladies and gentlemen, don't reject the truth. You should know the truth. The truth shall make you free. But if you reject the truth, there is no salvation. I don't care if you go to church 36 times a day and 72 times on a Sunday. You can go to church. You can go to church. You can go to church. You can build, build houses. You can give to the homeless. You can give blankets to the cold, give food to the hungry. But if you don't have the love of Christ in you and operating you, you're going to bust hell wide open. And so we all yeah. need to repent. Don't let God send strong delusion upon you. Because if God sends strong delusion upon you, that means you're without hope. You are without hope. You're beyond, beyond the black hole. Why? Because you chose to disobey the truth of God. And then don't let God turn you over to a reprobate mind. <clears throat> you, we, got, we have a good example of a reprobate mind in the White House. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of senators, reprobate minds, at least 50 of them. They don't have minds of their own. They're scared mm -hmm. to vote their conscience. And then we got a whole lot of folks in the House of Republicans. They don't have any minds of their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let this mind be in you that was in, was in Christ, the Bible says. Well, I've preached today on what is truth, part two. And you've got to find out for yourself what truth is. But let me give you a hint. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father. But by me, there's no, no religion that's going to lead you to God unless Jesus Christ is the center and you receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. There's no, there's no salvation in Islam because Islam does not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on the cross for all mankind. They call him a good prophet. But yet you got millions of people following Islam, perishing, 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 perishing. And they will kill you for what they believe. But like Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. In other words, I'm going to die with the gospel. Let me die with this gospel. Lord, strengthen me. Open my eyes. Lord, strengthen your people. Open our eyes. Renew our strength, God. Renew our strength. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, God. Workmen who need us not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Help us to live for the truth of your word. Lord, you said we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Jesus, you're the truth. You're the truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Fill us with your presence, with your spirit. And we thank you. Now, if there be anybody listening today, whether you're on live with us or listening by way of recording, and you want to be saved, you can be saved today. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart right now and be mm -hmm. saved, and he will save you. And if you're a Christian and you slid and you, you, you got out there with your friends, you know, put on your red cap, 
put your with the letters M A G A, make America great again, oh, wave oh, your flag, and and and, and, oh, and build a wall around the Mexicans and and send the blacks back to Africa. You got caught up in oh, that. Oh. You're a Christian, and, and 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 now you're convicted. You were wrong. Then just repent. Mm-hmm. Repent. Tell God you're sorry. And mm-hmm. stop doing that foolishness. Stop following those fools for leading you uh, straight to hell. Stop following them. I know they got money, mm-hmm. but tell them, no, keep your money. I don't want your money. I want mm-hmm. Jesus. Choose today, ladies and gentlemen, whom you'll be whom whom you'll serve. serve. If, if Baal be God, then serve him. But if the Lord be God, serve him. <laughs> As for me and my house, we will serve, serve the Lord. Them. As for uh, Jackie and me and our children and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our cousins, aunts, uncles, nephews, and nieces, as many as receive Jesus Christ, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We praise you and honor you, Lord God. And, Lord, bless the people. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we praise you and honor you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're going to stop the recording.